poetry and sort of like my life, how I grew up, what it, how it influenced me, um, what it does for me now, and maybe what it might be, you know, spur some interest in you, and what it might be in your life now, which you probably don't realize, and also maybe in the future. So, um, first of all, I grew up in my, my, my father, which is Kevin's grandfather, is a licensed and practicing engineer. So he went through, he actually have, has a master's degree, so he's been plenty of, plenty of schooling in engineering, mathematics, and of course geometry was a big part of that. So I grew up having seen um, plans, which are, I'll, I'll show a little bit, um, which is what they use to build buildings and everything like that. His, his focus was on uh, steam plant generation, which is energy to heat buildings. And that involves a lot of figuring out, you know, volumes and mass and pressure, which is some of the things that geometry helps him do. Um, it's interesting though, and you probably don't know this because you probably haven't even seen it, but a little the evolution of technology with geometry. When I was growing up, he was using a thing called a slide rule, where it, it's, I don't even know how he used it, but they, he could do calculations on a slide rule. There was no computers, there was no calculators. When I was, uh, I think it was prior to me even being in high school, he bought one of the first handheld calculators for almost 200 notes, $500. <laughs> you know what it did? It added and subtracted and multiplied and maybe did some no it didn't even do cos cosines and sines so that's where he was at and where I when I was growing up in high school what he used to do complicated geometry calculations and everything it was a handheld computer for five hundred dollars that did oh add subtract multiply so the evolution now you know in fact I, I have a little hand calculator here that's what about four dollars at you know any drugstore you go into right that side roll you've probably never even seen. You might have, it's a historical fact now probably. No one uses that now. Obviously everyone's into computers. And you're gonna be getting a lot of nice presentations with all the computer stuff. So that's why I'm focusing on something different because I do some of that, but I'd like to show you the perspective of where, where we got to that point, how we got there. So that was one of the things he did and used and which you don't even know about now and just to, show you how the evolution went from a handheld calculator for $500 to you know a $3 calculator and, and a, a $50 calculator can do what all your all your figure all your geometry calculations right um, so it, it also influenced me in that um, growing up I saw all that and I thought I wanted to be an engineer so I was taking geometry although uh, the curriculum is very different. Probably what you're learning now is almost what I learned in high school. Um, so you should uh, take note that you're well advanced from prior generations about what you're being taught already. Most of this geometry class is, I'm sitting there seeing Kevin at night doing homework and it's like, I did that as a sophomore in high school. You know, so it's changed a lot that way, just the, the approach that you all are taught and at what level and what time of your, you know, your school career that you're actually faced with geometry problems. Um, but as you, as you study it, you probably don't, you know, you're just looking at formulas and triangles and you're trying to figure out that and you probably don't really think about how does this relate to your everyday existence almost. And you don't realize it, that, but um, this building is built using geometry. That McDonald's you go into was built using geometry. All of those every day, everything you that, and you'll see, like I said, these really nice presentations of not, now how they design cars and buildings and things like that is all done through computers. Um, but it's all based on and using a lot of mathematics and geometry. Um, so our world wouldn't exist, and you wouldn't be sitting in that chair. That chair is probably even designed through a computer using mathematical and geometric uh, properties. Um, so w w when you really think about it, it affects your life and everything you do, everything you use or whatever. Um, so it's not something that you're just studying that's gonna be never used, either by you or anyone else, in some remote you know, 
a pie in the sky kind of uh, theory. It's, it's very practical. Um, and if you're ever thinking about engineering, that's what practical engineering is, designing, you know, and there's all kind of, the fields have expanded from my, my father being just a, a steam generation plant guy to now, you know, nuclear and uh, science, uh, biology, everything, all these uh, ge genetics and stuff is all totally expanded into engineering fields. So there's a lot out there for you to um, think about and hopefully through the studies you're starting off now to get some interest in doing some things like that. On a practical level, it affects my day every day. My job is a painting contractor and we do buildings like this. We do a bunch of big commercial buildings where we, um, I'm trying to think some of the jobs you might know of. Well, we're working right now out at the new football stadium for Chapel Hill. I hope there's some Tar Heels in here, but we're going to be doing some work on a big new expansion out there at Chapel Hill. We've done several office buildings out at RTP where a lot of scientific research is going on using a lot of geometry and mathematics. Um, all the research buildings out there for Cisco. You might have heard of Cisco, the big computer company we built and painted four or five of their buildings out on their campus. Now, how do I get those jobs or what is my job every day is using blueprints like this, which is what I typically briefly show you. Um, these are actually designed and made on a computer. It used to be this is what everyone used. This is what my dad grew up um, in his profession, learning how to read but also draw. And that was all hand drift, you know, everything was used with a roller and everything like that. Now, and you'll probably see some presentations where it's all through the computer. But this is what is still driven a lot out in the construction industry. So if you see that, that is a floor plan of a bunch of rooms. Like how they built this building, they had floor plans of each floor and they had the rooms laid out there. And you can see it's all dimensioned off. Most of this is linear, not necessarily, you know, the, the, the 3D that geometry brings you into, but most of it's linear. But that um, isn't always the case because some of these things that you see, this is a flat, right? You're looking down on this. So that's the one plane. But to visualize that wall, you don't see that by just looking down on it. With what you're seeing here is it's like if you were standing up in the ceiling looking down, and you're seeing all the, the floor dimension around here. But my job is, I don't do the floor. I gotta paint these walls, right? So I've gotta take the dimension from the floor to wherever that goes. And on some of these complicated buildings that we do, that could be 30 feet in the air. And it could be curved. And it could have they call it a bulkhead where it goes up to 10 feet and then all of a sudden it comes out here for another six feet and then it shoots up another 20 feet and then it goes back in and there's a window there in the wall. So it, it's not that simple as just taking this and measuring around and then you know doing some simple calculations. I have to look at that would be a cut through where I would see, they call it an elevation, where I would physically, I would see that wall on a blueprint. And for instance, here, I know it's kind of hard to see, but what what some of these, that is showing the wall, where you're actually seeing from the floor to the ceiling, that's the wall with then the ceiling coming out, or that's the, the roof. So there's a lot of taking off using mainly linear dimensions, but it still, you know, involves some complicated things using some geometric principles. Um, and nowadays, most people actually do do it on computers. As far as for a painting contractor like myself, they have some interesting computer things that we do use and um, where you can actually lay this on a, a board, a mechanical electronic board, where instead of using a roller, and this is how I would do it. Let's see if I got one. This is still old school right here, but it's still in use. These are the scales which, for
for like every eighth of an inch equals one foot. So when I do a measurement on this wall, on this room here, say I want to measure this room right here, it, it basically is almost a square. But I just take this rule measure and I lay that down here and that says that's 22 feet long and this is another 20 feet long. That's how I measure these walls. Now, that's just one dimension. But again, I told you I had to paint. I have to paint this wall. So I'm measuring, you know, the base down here. That's the length of that wall, 20 feet. But I need to figure out how high to get what the volume, the, the uh, square footage of this wall. So it's pretty simple. You know, it's 20 feet long. And then this is 10 feet high. So 20 times 10 is 200 feet. That's how many square feet is in this wall. And on multiple story buildings, there'll be, and we did a, we did a takeoff on a school. Um, and this is another personal thing. Kevin's older brothers uh, that had graduated from Cary Academy helped, worked for me during the summer, full time, looking at plans like this and using all the skills that they learned at Cary Academy in mathematics and ge geometry class to do takeoffs for me. That's what we call it, estimates. We had a school to look at that had a thousand rooms. So how you have to do that is it's a lot of you know data input output. So they had to set up schedules which listed every room, a thousand rooms. They put that into they developed their own little computer system to do the number crunching. They still had to physically do the measurement using something like this on floor plans that were this thick. You can imagine a thousand rooms, how many floor plans, how many plan sheets are there showing rooms. Um, I, I think it took both of them almost a week to do the job, to do the takeoff, where they were doing their measurements and then entering it into their computer and then that would do the calculations because you know all these walls, that adds up to almost, uh, I think it was like 500,000 to maybe a million square feet of walls that we had to estimate to paint. So it, it's, it's obviously, um, that's what my job is, that's what we do. But you can see how much it evolved with you know geometric principles and a lot of tedious work where the computer does take over some of it. Um, but most of it is done still hand, although like I said, some of the interesting things that are out there is you, we set this on an electronic board and you just use like your stylus. You just go bing, 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 bing in the four corners of the room. So you go ding, ding, you know, if you're looking at it like this, looking down on it, and it automatically does the calculations. You don't have to use this. You just hit them from corner to corner with the stylus and it's feeding it into the computer and doing the automatic calculations. Um, it, it's another interesting fact though is uh, some of these small plants like, such as this, I honestly can do it quicker by just doing it by hand than setting up that whole computer system and going to it. So probably half the time it, it's worth, it's not even worth it to use the computer system. Now some of the other presentations you're going to get though, they can't do that. The things that they're using to design um, computer programs are, there's no way, I mean that's, they've cut their time in, in half trying to do those, uh, their work. But from my, my perspective on a daily job, uh, you know, daily basis, what I do is um, I use, use basic stuff, pretty simple. It can be a complicated in terms of the, the size of project we're looking at, but um, it still comes down to basic principle, basic geometric questions and linear dimensions and calculations.